Hello, I am Dr. Lawrence Peter, consultant gastroenterologist and hepatologist at Columbia Asia Hospitals, Bangalore. Talking about the trends in gastroenterology and uh, liver diseases globally and then in India, there has been a lot of progress in uh, diagnosing diseases and understanding the exact pathophysiology or what leads to the disease, there, there have been tremendous leaps and bounds progress. For example, diseases like fatty liver, diseases like inflammatory bowel disease and uh, uh, like uh, food allergies and gluten allergies, people have recognized the key uh, factors involved including the nutrition and the interplay between what you eat and the bacteria in our gut and how it, it causes expression of the disease by producing some changes in our genetic expression. People have done a lot of research into it and there are hundreds of papers for, uh, for flowing out every month. Basically the concept is that our uh, you know, gut microbiome which we carry around 2 to 3 kgs per uh, in a, each individual has a, a diverse nature and there are good bacteria and the bad bacteria and these bacterial products and their metabolites, how our, our food and nutrition affects the type of bacterial flora and this interaction between the, the food and the bacterial flora and that influences the genetic expression in our ep intestinal epithelial cells and generally the, in, uh, the expression of multiple types of inflammatory diseases like fatty liver, inflammatory bowel disease and celiac disease, there are tremendous improvement, I mean, uh, progress in these fields. Even this has been put into therapeutic uh, strategies by trying out uh, changing of bacterial flora in these conditions. For example, uh, you know, there has been recent trends on uh, changing of bacterial flora even in globally and in, in India, there are few, many papers which have come in for diseases like uh, inflammatory bowel disease, C. difficile, toxic, I mean, uh, diarrhea, and even in fatty liver. The other trend which is trending in gastroenterology is uh, newer technologies, you know, like uh, we have uh, 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 the newer equipments, my, uh, the newer uh, uh, technologies in the, our accessories and the, the instruments what we use and even miniaturizing into a, even capsules, capsule endoscopies which can do even therapeutic uh, procedures inside the procedure, the, the, the progress is moving towards that. And uh, <coughs> now we have developed what's called as a, in endoscopy, the recent trend is something called third space endoscopy. So what is this third space endoscopy is that the first space is uh, our, uh, our uh, external space and second space is our internal space, what is uh, you know inside our intestines and what's our mouth and digestive that is the second space and third space is what is in between, just out between the, the spaces that is called third space. So we now have realized that we can go through the second space into our intestines and tunnel it through through the third space and do a lot of therapeutic procedures like uh, early detection and removal of cancers and even tumors through mouth and through rectal area, through colonoscopic area, uh, root. Uh, there are a lot of tremendous progress made in these kind of uh, endoscopic uh, procedures because of the progress made in refining and making better tools which work through these instruments. This is catching up globally and in India we have leaders in these kind of uh, procedures doing very advanced therapy. The third progress is in the, 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 the medications, you know, now we are going from uh, general, uh, you know, uh, giving anti-inflammatory or anti-tumor cells, we are going into targeted therapies in every field. Like inflammatory diseases, we are able to look at what is causing this inflammation, what are the pathways involved and target the therapy through s certain blockers or uh, even biologicals which go and monoclonal biologicals which go and block the specific activated pathway. These are the recent trends which is happening globally. Talking about 
impact of technology in gastroenterology. gastroenterology. Now we have uh, the capsule endoscopies which have come in. Initially, few years back, it was just a, a visualization of the mucosa. And now we have capsules which uh, not only visualizes the mucosa forward and backwards in a better angle, better resolution, more, more uh, uh, pictures per second, frames per second, so we don't miss anything. And also which can measure the pH, transit, temperature, and also can detect uh, abnormal uh, blood and even abnormal cells in the mucosa. There are the capsules which are developed on that. So there are a lot of technologies working in that. Other thing is that the miniaturization technolo technology is, is becoming quite uh, advanced. Even therapeutic procedures, people are looking at capsules which can biopsy from deeper inside and even do a basic uh, simple uh, procedures like uh, uh, bleeding points, uh, co coagulation, those things are also catching up in the, the newer technologies. The transplantation and uh, 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 the process of organ preservation, all those technologies have make, made leaps and bounds, changes have been made in this field. The, the challenges are, one is in, in India, we have in gastroenterology, the major challenges are infectious diseases. We still have a challenge in controlling them, giving safe water safe uh, and complete vaccination and, and preventing infectious diseases is a big challenge in India itself because of our poor sanitation and our poor health, uh, uh, health issues and uh, general uh, care. The other challenges are the complex diseases, understanding the basic what causes the real disease and what prevents from a person not getting and a person getting the disease, what is the trigger factors in many diseases like inflammatory bowel disease, even celiac diseases and fatty livers. We are all scratching on the top and we are trying to reach at what exactly is the reason. So there may, not, there may be a future where we are able to identify what's exactly going wrong in a, in a particular person and what is his genetic makeup and what is the process which is happening in such a person and we can prescribe personalized medicine. So till that time we are just trying to understand the disease process. So this is a challenge and these and identifying these factors it require sophisticated uh, you know testings which may, which may be testing your genomics, your metaboli metabolomics or even transcriptomics and even proteinomics. What kind of protein are you producing in your blood? What kind of, kind of RNAs are you transcribing? That will tell us ex what exactly is going wrong in a person and getting into a, into a you know, pers particular personalized care for them. That is going to be the future and a challenge for us to get into that field. In Columbia, Asia, we have a, a more holistic kind of an approach to every disease and we have uh, a complete uh, set of uh, the latest uh, equipments of our diagnostics and therapeutics and we have a skilled uh, group of people uh, handling each department and majority of the cases they we have a combined discussion between the surgeons the physicians the pathologists the nutritionists and we arrive at a common ground and we, and also we respect the patient's rights and we we also include the patient's uh, decision, conscious decisions and informed decisions in managing these patients. So we are able to give uh, informed uh, 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 consensual treatment to each patient, putting into the inputs of the surgeons, the radiologists, the pathologists, and uh, the medical specialists and nutritionists, everything. So we are able to give them a comprehensive therapy. That's the best thing I feel is the uh, column.